2020 Dumbledore struggled in I, I struggled to read some of the books <laughs> hope you're all doing well happy 2022 can you believe that i'm saying that i feel like it's still the end of 2019 and the last two years didn't really happen but here we are we're in 2022 and it's been a hot minute since I've recorded a video. I debated whether or not to film this video and I thought, you know what, I'm going to film it anyway because if I don't, I'm going to regret it looking back. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 reads of 2021. If you've been following me on any type of social media or my booktube channel, you'll know that I've been in the biggest reading slum since about April last year. I think I finished the year on like 34 books in total but I still managed to come away with 10 books that I really enjoyed. Let's jump into these and let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books as well. I'd love to know your thoughts on them. So in at number 10, The Sad Ghost Club 2. I received this from Hatchet. This is a graphic novel. You'll notice a theme of the books featured. The majority are part of a series, graphic novels, or short stories basically. I really enjoyed the first one but I think this one because it's sort of the first one sets up the plot very well and sets up all the characters and the story and this one delves into like the characters in more detail is really interesting because it discusses like mental health, anxiety, depression in a way that's really raw and realistic but is accessible for younger readers as well which I think is fantastic and I love the characters and it's sort of delves into their friendships and them sort of discovering who they are and discovering like who they want to be is just is amazing. In at number nine and this is another graphic novel and this is Fangs. Sarah very kindly gifted me this for my birthday and I loved it. It's such a short read but can we talk about how beautiful the cover is and the sprayed edges like oh is about a vampire and a werewolf that fall in love basically and oh, it's just fantastic it's all little sort of like comedy sketches and yeah it kind of like there's references to a lot of sort of vampire and werewolf books and films and stuff so you've got like things about Dracula in here you've got things about Twilight the comedy of it is just fantastic and yeah I loved it in at number eight, Every Line of You, and this is by Naomi Gibson, and this was another book that was gifted to me. Chicken House Books very kindly sent this to me. I was part of the Instagram tour. It was It's kind of like a blog tour, but on Instagram. We did like a read along every day and then reviewed the book. And oh my goodness, I love this book so much. If you are somebody that loves Black Mirror, loves dystopian vibes, you definitely need to get on this book and read it. The main character creates an AI who is very, very smart and sort of becomes her AI boyfriend and will stop at nothing to make sure that she's happy. Once I started reading it, I really struggled to put it down because we were reading a couple of chapters each day and then discussing it on Naomi's Instagram and I will be honest, it got to about the Wednesday and I had to read ahead. In at number seven, we have got ourselves a chunky boy. Uzumaki and this is by Junji Ito. This is a manga. As you can see it is a chunky manga and this was the first manga that I've ever read and honestly it didn't disappoint. If you love horror you need to read Junji. Oh, I, I can't begin to describe to you how fantastic this book was. The illustrations were amazing. The story was such an interesting concept. It's about a town that's plagued by spirals and it's like a curse. And it's all about like the characters trying to figure out what's going on. The spirals that like feature there they're basically like weaved into everything within the manga and like it almost makes you feel unsettled and sick when you're reading it that's not like even taken into consideration how messed up like the plot itself is because it is but if you do love horror and stuff that's quite graphic i'd i'd recommend this i'm i feel like i'm not selling it but it's honestly 
is fantastic like the the plot itself is amazing as well like it's a really really interesting read in at number six we have a very different read to Uzumaki it is the quantum weirdness of the almost kiss and I read this for the booked hooked box book club in February last year I want to say and oh I loved this book so so much so we received this in February's book hooked box and if you've never heard of this book before I mean the likelihood is you probably haven't and like oh it annoys me so much that like there's certain books that don't get enough hype when they absolutely deserve it if you love love triangles and YA love stories you need to read this book it's so clever and even though it's sort of got like science aspects it's sort of explained in a way that's accessible for readers because I haven't got a, like a very good like mathematical or scientific brain but I loved it it's so clever the plot is fantastic I love the main character it goes into things like mental health there's sort of like a friends to lovers as well like oh it's just I know people talk about enemies to lovers but like a slow burning romance when it's two friends oh I live for that so much we're halfway there and in at number five we have the most wholesome read of 2021 it is heartstopper volume four if you've never read the heartstopper series and you love books that are completely inclusive and are just ah oh, so so wholesome you need to read this graphic novel series this was the first graphic novel not this one but the first book was the first graphic novel i ever read and it got me into graphic novels this one touched upon more serious topics in terms of things like eating disorders and mental health so that's definitely something to be mindful of if you're gonna go into reading this but it was amazing I love to read about Mick and Charlie and I can't wait for the Netflix series now and I've seen the casting and the casting is like chef's kiss in at number four fence is striking distance this is a novel based on the fence graphic novel series it is canon but some people don't see it as that but I absolutely loved it I never thought that I would love a series about fencing would 100% recommend if you've read the graphic novel series in at number three so we're into the top three now this is one that I don't actually have at the moment so I'll put a photo up here and as you can see it's Daisy Jones and the six and interestingly when I originally read this book, I only give it four stars. So you might be wondering why it's featured as number three on my list if it was originally four stars. Once I'd read it and I was thinking about it, I was like, I don't understand why I didn't give it five stars because it was a really fantastic book. And I think the only reason why I didn't initially give it five stars is because I loved the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much and because I love that book so much I think any other Taylor Jenkins read book is not quite gonna meet my expectations so I think I was holding it to like an unrealistic expectation in my brain because when I was thinking about it it was fantastic I didn't really guess like what was gonna happen I love the characters if you're not sure what Daisy Jones and the Six is about it's about Daisy Jones who is a singer and is set in like the 60s and it's all about like the music sort of like rock and roll scene and she teams up with a band called the Six and the way the book is formatted is really interesting and it's so unique so it's all set up as an interview so you get all the different characters point of views and obviously you have like the interviewer as well and yeah it's just it's really interesting like th having a concept of a book written that way what i love so much about taylor jenkins reed's work is that she gets you so engrossed with the characters and the way she describes like hollywood and like the music scene and things in both seven husbands of evelyn hugo and daisy jones and the six it just makes you completely engrossed in the world and it's almost like these characters and these bands are real so like there's lyrics and stuff in this of the songs and like when they go on tour it explains that and it is so realistic that you end up just like loving the characters and just being really invested in the story it's just one of those books exactly like seven husbands that all i can say is that you just need to read it to understand and the likelihood is you're gonna love it because it's just 
absolutely fantastic. Okay, so in at number two, we have a book that probably isn't going to surprise you. <laughs> it is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. And yes, I was a self-proclaimed Sarah J Maas hater at the start of the year. I read her book as part of my overhyped book series. I thought A Court of Thorns and Roses was good. I think I gave it five, four stars and it was one of those books I didn't want to put down when I started reading. So I knew that I was enjoying it more than I wanted to enjoy it. I just didn't want to admit it, you know? This book blows A Court of Thorns and Roses out of the water. Without giving too much away, I love the characters. Resend is just, ah, oh, perfection. <sighs> If any fictional character could be my boyfriend, this book, whew, it is a bit steamy, so don't think it's a YA because it's not a YA, even though people think it is. Chapter 55. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Read this book. It's fantastic. If I could give it six, I probably would. And I can't believe I'm sitting here telling you that I love the Sarah J Maas book. But here we go. This is why you've got to be open to reading outside of your typical genres and reading books that you think you're going to hate. Sometimes you will hate them, you know, that's just a given. But this book, yeah, I'm a Sarah J Maas stan. What can I say? Um, I'm as shocked as you are. Drum roll, please. We have my top read of 2021. In at number one is Stephen King's Rose Murder and oh, this book it's not an easy read so don't go into this book lightly there's a lot of trigger warnings linked to it and it's not for the faint-hearted but it's absolutely fantastic i think it's such an underrated stephen king book it does get a little bit weird it kind of lost me about three quarters of the way through and then it pulled me back in in the last quarter because i was like well, what is going on because there's the whole thing about like a painting and like a bull and yeah and norman daniels is like one of the scariest characters ever because it's so realistic in how he is an evil character if that makes any sense it's so well written this is one of the books that i've read that stephen king has got like right in from a woman's perspective well because <laughs> he doesn't typically get right in women very well let's be honest here is one of those ones that like a lot of sort of like newer stephen king readers probably wouldn't think to read but coming from somebody who's only really been reading Stephen King for around a year, I would 100% recommend this book. That was my top 10 reads of 2021. It was a wide mix of books, I know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments what your favourite read of 2021 was and what are you looking forward to reading in 2022. I would love to know. And I will see you soon in another video.